name is John Moreno, and I'm here to talk about concurrent design patterns. So the outline for today consists of an introduction and the depiction of uh, three or, uh, I mean, uh, four uh, design patterns, which are the futures pattern, the generator pattern, and the fan out, fan in patterns. The reason for choosing these patterns to, for this presentation uh, has to do with the fact that uh, each pattern builds upon the previous one. So the, the futures pattern is the basis for the generator pattern, which in turn is the basis for... I'm going to start by citing Rob Pike, which is one of the creators of the Go programming language. He says that uh, concurrency is a way to structure software, particularly is a way to write clean code that uh, interacts well with the real world. It is uh, not parallelism. That last sentence is uh, quite important. But in general, he's, what he's, he's saying is that uh, in the real world, um, one thing doesn't happen while the others uh, stand still. So you don't perform uh, one action while people around you uh, freeze in the meantime. So uh, a way to, to model that uh, behavior is uh, through concurrency because uh, one thing happens while others might also be uh, happening. And on the other hand, uh, Pete Laker and Ken Cenorelli from Microsoft say that uh, a concurrency pattern is a category of design pattern used in software engineering to identify methods that a computer program uses to handle asynchronous tasks. And notice that I scratched the multi-threaded uh, uh, portion from their definition because as some of uh, us know, uh, JavaScript is a language that has some implementations that are not uh, capable of multi-threading, but uh, JavaScript is a, a concurrent language and we wouldn't want to exclude them from, the, from that mix. So um, from that previous um, slide, it's clear that we have to make a distinction between concurrency and uh, parallelism. So uh, concurrency is the ability of different parts or units of a program, algorithm, or problem to be executed uh, out of order or in partial order without affecting the final outcome. And on the other hand, parallelism is a type of computation in which many calculations or processes are carried out simultaneously. Uh, I highlighted the, the key portions of the definitions uh, just to state that uh, even though both refer to uh, different parts of a program being, carried, being uh, executed, the fact that they are uh, executed uh, out of order or simultaneously is what makes uh, uh, the difference. So um, uh, Go uses communicating sequential processes as its concurrency model. And in this model, uh, as its name implies, the primary constructs are the processes, which are um, communicating by some means in order to carry out uh, the task uh, at hand. In Go's case, the primary construct is the article routines and the primary messaging mechanism are the, the channels. Um, since some of you are um, uh, Go developers, um, you might know um, that Go routines are defined uh, in a way too complex uh, manner to, to be expressed here. So I'm going to uh, define it in length terms by saying that a Go routine is just a function that starts a new thread. And channels are not only complex, but extremely clever in their design. Um, so I'm, I'm again simplifying by saying that a channel is a typed variable or proxy by which a goroutine uh, publishes or generates a message that will eventually be consumed by other goroutines. Uh, CSP is a formal language for describing patterns of interaction based on message passing via channels. And there are multiple implementations for, for that. 
uh, two were mentioned in our Ockham and Erlang. Goals uh, recommended approach to concurrency can be summarized as uh, don't communicate by sharing memory, share memory by communicating. But in practice, in real life, uh, that uh, uh, doesn't not happen uh, by default because uh, all the routines in a group program share the same memory address space. And there are no restrictions in the programming language on how Go routines access uh, share data. And that's why the use of uh, these design patterns, this and more uh, design patterns becomes uh, critical in order to avoid things such as race conditions and uh, Go routine leaks. So the first pattern I'm presenting is uh, the futures pattern. A uh, future is a result that is initially unknown, usually because the computation of its value is not yet complete. And an object of some sort, in this case a channel, can be used as a proxy until say result becomes uh, available. There are um, multiple applications to, to this pattern. Um, like for example, you can um, submit or upload data by consuming some uh, API without waiting for an immediate uh, response. Um, you can also query a database result according to multiple criteria where each criterion based uh, result is a future value. So in order to illustrate this uh, pattern, I'm going to uh, define a problem. And the problem is, uh, suppose we have two square matrices, A and B, and we want to calculate the product of their inverses. So from introduction to algebra, we know uh, how a matrix is defined, how its inverse is uh, determined, and how the product is also determined. Uh, a computationally extensive, uh, uh, intensive task. So um, there are a lot of techniques and factorizations to try to avoid uh, the inverse. So it's a, a good candidate to to show this pattern, but uh, I'm going to limit it to a two by two by two matrices. So I'm going to show a classical solution, a concurrent solution, and a variation. So let's start by showing the classical solution to the futures pattern. So uh, here it is. First, um, uh, defining matrix A, the matrix B, and then I'm calculating the the product of the inverses by using this uh, this function. In this function, I'm obtaining first uh, matrix A, then matrix B, and then I'm calculating the, the product. So let's see uh, this implementation. The, um, the implementation starts by defining the, the type, two by two uh, matrix, uh, then a stringer, then a factory function, and um, the inverse for the inverse, I'm using a formula for two by two matrices, but I'm uh, adding some some delay just uh, for fun. <laughs> and uh, for the product, I'm also using uh, a formula. So let's see how the asynchronous version of this. Uh, Looks like um, here I'm, I'm also um, using the um, the synchronous Im implementation just to for comparison. So I'm starting by uh, initial uh, declaring defining uh, matrix A, then matrix B, then calculating the synchronous uh, uh, solution, and then the asynchronous one using these, uh, these functions. And here I'm again, in the asynchronous implementation, I'm again uh, obtaining the matrix A, but uh, what I'm getting as a, as a result 
it's not the it's not the, the result it's not the future uh, but um, it is a, a proxy a, a channel and same for matrix b so while the calculations are performed i could actually do some work here if i need to and then the the product of the inverses is uh, is computed um here i'm including the the synchronous solution just to to show that uh, an implement an implementation can asynchronous implementation can be expressed in terms of the of, of an asynchronous one and here are the details of the implementation again i'm defining the matrix the stringer a factory function and i'm expressing the original uh, api for the synchronous version in terms of the asynchronous one and for the asynchronous implementation um wrapping the original implementation in an anonymous function i'm creating a channel then firing an algorithm and then returning that channel and for the product i'm doing something similar uh, wrapping the original implementation creating a, a channel uh, firing the routine and returning the the channel and the actual work is uh, done in the the routines in both cases so this is pretty much the the pattern uh, create a channel fire a routine return uh, the channel and here i'm highlighting uh, these two words just to show that uh, every time you create a channel you have to make sure that you dispose of that channel when it's no longer needed um, to avoid a uh, goroutine uh, leak. So let's see how this uh, be, uh, how this run. Give me a second. So as you can see uh, here, the synchronous implementation takes uh, two seconds to, to complete. Uh, while the uh, asynchronous one takes uh, one second because the, the inverses are being uh, calculated uh, simultaneously. One thing uh, to consider is that um, this pattern is, uh, is better for computationally intensive uh, tasks. And sometimes those tasks uh, take longer than than what we want them to. Uh, so for that case, uh, we can have a, a variation in which I introduce some cancel mechanism um, that is um, constrained to some uh, timeout. So in this case, the the execution is uh, pretty similar, but um, for the asynchronous implementation, I'm introducing this uh, cancel variable and passing it as as an argument, and I'm using the select construct uh, just to wait on the on either the the timeout or the completion of the of the of the task of the calculation. And in the, in this case, the implementation is uh, pretty similar. I have um, the definition, the stringer, the uh, factory function, and again, I'm expressing. I can express the original API in terms of the asynchronous one. And um, for the for this asynchronous implementation, the only thing that changes is that I'm using here uh, a select to wait. On, on the cancel channel or on the completion of the of the computation. And uh, in this case, we can we can see the the results. So, for example, uh, we already know that uh, it might take. Um, a little more than one second to to complete the the task, 
So when the timeout is uh, 500 milliseconds, uh, it doesn't complete. So the operation is canceled. Again, we do 100 milliseconds, 100 seconds, uh, the operation doesn't complete. So it, it is canceled again. Uh, but with 1.5 uh, seconds, the operation can complete. And something similar for the two second uh, timeout. So, uh, any any questions in regards to, to this pattern? Okay, so let's continue with the generator um, pattern. A uh, generator is a routine that can be used to control the iteration behavior of a loop. And uh, this uh, pattern has some applicability. La, in general, in, it is good when dealing with a uh, asynchronous computation of uh, where the result is a sequence. So for example, if you want to return the first n values of the Fibonacci sequence, which is a classical uh, example, uh, or if you want to provide progress while loading or processing a huge file, in this case, the sequence is the percentage of progress. Or if you want to obtain the not yet visited entries from a subscription, like uh, yeah, <clears throat> you subscribe to, to some tweets and, and you get the ones you're, you haven't uh, uh, read yet, and that um, this pattern is, is good for that. So again, I'm going to illustrate uh, the pattern with a, with a problem. In this case, uh, it is a uh, find and print the first 100 prime numbers, then per line. So let's uh, see first the classical solution. In the classical solution for this, uh, for this is um, it's just to obtain a, a slice with the with the prime numbers and um, print the the values uh, temper line. So I'm doing some checking to just to intro, to insert the new line. And uh, as I mentioned, in this case, the classical uh, the implementation is just uh, using slides. So here I'm using the sieve of Eratosthenes, which is um, just a way to uh, obtain all the prime numbers in the, in this case, in the first 10,000 ones, and then using that to, uh, in the function to return the slide with the desired amount of, of, of primes and uh, let's see how the asynchronous uh, version works. The only difference between the synchronous and asynchronous uh, version is in, in this uh, for loop. In this case, I'm using a slice, so I need, I need a, a key and a value. Uh, while in this case, in this case, I'm using a I'm getting a channel. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm using a channel. So uh, I only need the, the value, but um, it's introducing a, a key anyway in order to, to insert the, the new line. So for this case, the implementation again uses the C buffer atostenes, and the only thing that changes is the uh, this method that is uh, returning a channel. So here I start by uh, creating a channel, firing a go routine, and returning a channel. As you can see, the, the pattern is pretty similar to to the the features one. Uh, the only difference is that I'm using a loop and returning multiple to return multiple values instead of of just one. And uh, one thing to consider about this uh, pattern is that it is not about uh, performance, but about convenience. So as you will see, 
Um, in this case, the, the slice version is uh, faster than the... And the uh, the slice version takes um, 92 uh, microseconds, while the standard version makes uh, takes uh, more, more more of that. Uh, it that might not always be the case. In this case, it's because uh, uh, there's nothing to compute. So, um, because the sieve of Eratosthenes has already uh, obtained all, all the values. So, but um, for this in particular case, uh, this is, is lower. And as I said, it's not about uh, uh, speed, but about uh, convenience. So, for example, you can, con you can uh, consume the, the values uh, at different times uh, throughout your your execution. So for this for this variation and consuming first uh, the first five values, uh, I ask for twenty values, then consume the first five, then consume another ten, and then I try to consume uh, ten more. But um, I'm checking to see if the channel is is, is closed. And um, after consuming uh, five, the channel is closed. And as you can see uh, here, uh, when I consume the first five values. The the generate the go routine for the generator is uh, is still active, but after that, the go routine uh, is no longer uh, available. Uh, just the the values the the buffer for the for the channels for the channel. So that uh, illustrates the generator uh, pattern. Uh, any question? Up to this point. Yeah. Okay. So um, the last uh, pattern uh, or patterns I'm going to, to present are the fan out and fan in uh, patterns. A uh, fan out refers to the pattern of executing multiple functions concurrently in order to speed up the results, and fan in refers to the pattern of merging multiple concurrent results, uh, in this case, uh, channels into some form of aggregation. So these uh, patterns are uh, good whenever the order of the computation is, does not matter. And um, what matters is the final uh, outcome of the aggregation. And some applicability for these are like uh, if you have some massive amount of data and you want to apply some transformation to each uh, element or, or each entry of that uh, of that uh, data you can use uh, this pattern or uh, for example if you want uh, you can use the the final pattern for the for the transformation and person or you can use the funny pattern if you want to merge the lines of two text files or you can use the fan out funny uh, followed by the funny pattern if you want to to build a processing pipeline, like for example, you you want to log, uh, read an image, um, convert it convert it to to a different uh, format, uh, save it, and then report if the if the processing fail or, or not. You can use uh, the find out funny uh, patterns. And again, I'm going to illustrate the pattern with a problem. In this case, uh, given 1200 prime numbers, calculate the sum, the sum of the squares and the sum of the cubes. And again, I'm going to, to present a classical solution and a concurrent one. So let me start by showing the classical solution. So here's the, uh, the classical solution. Um, I'm going to, I want 200 uh, prime numbers. So I define the, this uh, type to, just to contain the, the numbers, its square and its cube. I have a factory function and a stringer. 
And I simply use um, a loop to calculate the aggregations, uh, print um, each uh, row and then print the aggregates. And here I'm using the channel, the generator channel uh, from the previous uh, example, from the previous section. So that, um, that's a classical way to, or the sequential way to deal with uh, that. Let's see. The asynchronous uh, way. In this case, I, I again have um, 1200 prime numbers, one to 100 prime numbers. I define a type, a uh, factory function, and a stringer. And for the final portion, I want uh, four traits. Or... So I start by uh, obtaining the, the channel and then doing the fan out portion, which is uh, uh, this one. I, um, I create one channel uh, per thread and use this uh, fan out uh, function to, to deal with the, with the specifics. Um, in this, um, I'm, uh, I'm obtaining um, the sample as an argument and the, the um, the prime prime numbers uh, channel. I'm creating an output channel, firing a go routine, and returning that uh, channel. And you notice that the the pattern is similar to the generator one, and the computation is uh, is is done uh, is done uh, here. Um. For the, the funding portion consists of uh, simply in uh, emerging uh, all these channels into, into one final uh, channel. And for that, uh, I'm using this uh, funding uh, function. This function uh, gets all the, all the channels from, from the, all the output, all the channels from the fan out uh, portion and those, those they emerging. So again, it will create a, a channel, fire some go routines and return uh, that channel. Here I'm using um, the weight group uh, in order to, to wait on, on this go routine. This can be done without, uh, without using this, uh, this weight group just using the select construct, but it's a uh, way more uh, complex and um, not, um, not good for the for this uh, example, since I'm trying to, to simplify things or I'm legs. <laughs> uh, so this uh, weight group is an um, atomic uh, uh, variable with, with a couple of, of um, of method, uh, an atomic uh, variable is a um, uh, variable that can be accessed from multiple goroutines without have, having to risk. So um, in this case, the weight group has two additional methods, one to, to signal when, when, um, when done, and one to wait until all the work is completed. So uh, here I'm, I'm telling you that, that I'm going to wait for uh, for uh, coroutines to, to complete. And in this loop, I fire uh, all those uh, coroutines. And then I fire an additional coroutine to wait on, on all those other coroutines. So this, uh, this is pretty much the, the pattern, I'm going to show the solution. Um, unlike the previous one, uh, here's uh, the performance uh, does matter. 
Let me get rid of that. So, um, so as you can see, it takes uh, 151 uh, seconds to, to complete. I, I get the the aggregates at the end, and I get uh, these uh, rows in uh, in order. So for the parallel version, uh, the synchronous one, sorry, uh, it takes like a um, a quarter of the time to, to complete, but I cannot guarantee that the order of this is uh, is uh, maintained. But if I, if for some reason, uh, I'm in a situation where I have to guarantee the order of the computations and still want to use the fan of fanning, I can do some sorting uh, at the end. And in this case, uh, it takes uh, twice what it takes for the for the for the parallel version, but it still takes half the time it takes for the sequential uh, version. So it's still uh, again. Uh, well, here I can guarantee that uh, these rows are in order, so all the computations are, um, even though they're carried out um, uh, out of order. Um, I get the expected result uh, at the end. So before asking for some questions, um, here are some of the references uh, I use for, for this presentation. And um, all the resources, uh, I mean, the source code I use uh, here can be found uh, at this um, repository. And as a disclaimer, uh, the source code is um, it's just for for illustration. Uh, it's not intended to be to be used in production or <laughs> without a without any top. And as I mentioned during the, the presentation, uh, some things were uh, simplified, like uh, using weight groups or things like that. So, um, are there any questions? Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering uh, about the futures, the first one, the first pattern, because uh, I think I didn't get the the idea. So is, isn't that the, the, the channel itself is a future? Or... Uh, yes, the, no, the, the future is a value you don't, you don't yet have. So, um, uh, <laughs> Uh, how to explain it without without the because you, you know what I mean. If the if yeah, the channel yeah, is some, if, if, if the, you don't consume the channel, the channel, the channel, the channel is a it's like a, a like a promise a proxy. Yeah. Uh, the future is the actual value. Yes. Yeah. So um, so uh, the future is the fulfilled uh, value, but uh, you get the proxy the the channel in the meantime. Um, is it uh, clear or? It, yeah, just trying to make a reference. I mean, the same reference, you know, in, uh, I guess, different programming languages, yeah? Future and promise. Um, yes, Those yes. Um, the, the pro yeah, the, the promise is, um, is the channel. And, um, and the value is the future. It, somehow. Uh, yeah. When it's resolved, uh, that's the future. When the promise is resolved in JavaScript, that's a future. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and any any other questions? No questions. Okay. Okay, John, you are finished. Okay. Thank you very much uh, to everyone for attending the presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you for your preparation. And thanks for joining us. And uh, please, dear participants, uh, fill out our feedback form after this event. And have a nice day for everyone.
Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, John. Bye-bye.